Thank you. I'll call a meeting to order. Got uh, approval of the minutes for April the 9th, 2018 special meeting. Joe, I make a motion we approve the minutes for the special meeting April the 9th. Thank you, Debbie. Second. Thanks, Shanna. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Objections? Motion passes. Thank you. Next, we have the financials, April financial report. I have a question on the Republic service uh, on the bills paid, the 29174 I think there may be a typo. It says, if you look under admin, it's got a different amount there. It has 29092. Just the type one, yeah. It's supposed to be, I think, $68 of it is supposed to be police. And then actually this that month, there was an $85 charge for public works. Um, they had gotten a dumpster for the re cleanup over there. So it was, that one was on typo on my bad. And then just the last question about the financials is, it states there's, New, equip, uh, new equipment over 300. Mm -hmm. I think that one, is that for office equipment? Should, and I, should that be under the other line item, equipment under 300? Is that 254.89? Which department was that? I'm sorry, in the admin department? Admin? Mm hmm. That's yeah. Mm hmm. It comes out of that line item every month. For the new equipment over 300? Because yeah. it's an every month charge. It's the lease on the copier. Okay. So that's what it's, yeah, it comes out of. Any other questions? A motion to approve the financial. Make a motion we accept. Thank you, Ted. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you to the mayor's opening remarks. I want to read a uh, proclamation in the opening remarks for. Uh, Judicial, 12th Judicial Circuit, uh, they have a drug program for Henry Trimble and Olam. This is uh, drug court month, so I'd like to read a proclamation for, for that. Uh, City of LaGrange, Kentucky, to whom all of these presents shall come, whereas for over 20 years, Kentucky drug courts have been restoring lives, reuniting families, and making communities across the Commonwealth safer, and whereas drug courts facilitate community-wide partnerships that bring together criminal justice, public safety, and treatment professionals in the fight against substance abuse and criminality, and whereas drug courts are now recognized as the most successful criminal justice intervention in our nation's history, and whereas drug courts reduces recidivism, 9% of Kentucky court drug gradu graduates were convicted of new felonies in two years following graduation versus, <clears throat> excuse me, 18% for non-drug court defendants on probation for similar offense. Whereas the drug court movement had grown nationwide from the 12 original drug courts in 1994, over 3,000 operational drug courts, and whereas over the past 25 years, drug courts have served over 1.4 million individuals nationwide 
whereas Kentucky Drug Court is operating successfully in 113 counties with 89 adult programs, whereas Drug Court has helped more than <clears throat> 8,900 Kentucky citizens turn their lives away from drugs to become contributing members of society, and whereas in May, National Drug Court Month celebrates the promise of recovery and restored hope to drug court graduates and their families. Now, I, there I for Joe Davenport, Mayor of the City of LaGrange, Kentucky, proclaim, proclaim May 2018 as Drug Court Month in LaGrange, Kentucky, and urge all citizens to recognize the practitioners and participants who make drug court work and significant contributions that drug courts have made and continue to make in reducing drug usage and crime. They usually have a graduation. They send an invitation out for when uh, they graduate from drug court here in Oldham County. So thank you. Next on the agenda, we got old Jefferson Street. We don't have. I'm. I'd like to push this back. We don't have any representative from KNS here that's uh, joining property owner. Uh, I don't think we ought to be discussing this since they have been in a trying to get an agreement with uh, LaGrange Elementary School to to solve this. So I, I don't think it's fair to, to to discuss this without the other adjoining property owner being here. I don't know if they were notified or I have no idea. It's uh, council's up to the council. If y'all want to Removed from the agenda and well, is there an agreement that's been reached or not? Is there anybody that can bring that up and discuss it? If you could do that, at least we'll be informed what's going on before you decide what to do or not do. Um, good evening, my name is Brent Bohannon, Director of Facilities for Odom County Schools. The superintendent and I have met with uh, Mr. Kincaid uh, multiple times on the property. And what you see before you there is um, kind of a bullet pointed list of how we got to where we are today in the discussion um, and what our uh, proposal, which has been presented to him, um, like I said, on multiple occasions. Um, the first document that you see there is a survey that we had completed uh, to identify the meets and bounds of the existing LaGrange property, the right of way, and the adjoining property of KNS Land Corporation. The uh, acreage in question here is the 0.47 acres, um, which is identified by the red, uh, the red mark there. As you can see there, that, that, that property would extend from the uh, 6th Avenue um, corner of the LaGrange property down the property line until it meets the 5th Avenue corner, which is marked by an X, across the uh, what used to be the Jefferson Street right of way to the corner of KNS Lane Corporation property, following that property line back down to 6th Avenue right of way. Um, the next document you see there is a proposed demolition plan. Um, which would remove the asphalt um, that's in its current state, remove the existing sidewalk on the LaGrange property side, to realign that um, to improve the handicap accessibility along that sidewalk, and also to uh, widen that right widen that parcel of land so that we can get 90 degree parking in that. The next development plan you see there um, has identified a schematic elements that um, we've been discussing with Mr. Kincaid. Um, for instance, the fence, the island and four foot chain link fence along the uh, south portion of that, the 30 foot gate that would allow him access 
um, for delivery trucks, um, as well as the 24 foot drive. And the final document you see there would be a uh, kind of a schematic um, drainage and grading plan. The, the final grading hasn't been completed at this time until we um, have the engineering completed. Um, but as you can see that we are uh, creating, adding additional six catch basins, which improve the site drainage for not just the, the right of way itself, but also for the adjacent properties. Um, and what you see in the bullet points there is kind of the, uh, the arrangement that we've been talking about with Mr. Kincaid. Odom County School would, uh, is prepared to assume the responsibility of repaving and maintaining the entire parcel of land previously known as Jefferson Street right away. However, by law, the Odom County Schools cannot use school funds to improve real property unless the property is owned by Odom County Schools. The property described, previously described is listed there. Odom County Schools intends to continue to use the property for parking for the Grange. The only other property member affected by the closure of Oldham County Street, or Old Jefferson Street is KNS property. Oldham County Schools has agreed to grant KNS a permanent non-transferable access easement from 6th Street, sorry, 6th Avenue, I should say, to the north side of his property so that he can access the bays um, on the north side of his building. Odom County Schools will grant KNS an easement to use a strip on the south side of the fence that you see proposed. This would allow him to continue to use the property for parking and vehicle storage. Odom County Schools will install a fence between the strip and the rest of the parcel. Um, the installation of the gate extending from the fence on the south side of the parking lot to prevent unauthorized through traffic onto KS, KNS's property. At no cost to KNS, KNS will be able to open and close the gate to accept deliveries or move vehicles at any time other than student drop-off and pickup windows. As a part of the paving project, Oakland County Schools will improve the site drainage for the entire parcel at no cost to KNS or to the city. Oakland County Schools has again has met multiple times um, with Mr. Kincaid on the property, walked the property, and um, other than squabbling over a foot here and a foot there, I think that we've got a pretty good. Um, arrangement to move forward. Um, however, to finalize the documents um, for the plan here, we kind of need to know the, the council's direction on it. So I thought that he would be with us today, but I guess not. So however you all would like to proceed is fine with me in the schools. Do we not have any kind of statement or anything from him? Do we know, did he know this was happening tonight, and do we have a reason for why he's not here? I can't speak for him, ma'am. I met, met with him just last last week, though. This was not discussed in ordinance committee. Mm -mm. Not this month. I still have some questions on the property itself. I feel like we still haven't been given a clear detail. I keep hearing different things as far as the city having this property. And I know um, Wayne Kincaid's attorney was had some documents on that, which we have never actually, as a council, have never seen those before. I personally would like to look at that um, because I think that we need to have proof because I would hate to see something happen later down on the road the city come back and get sued over this property. Because it's my understanding just from the information that we have received and from talking to others that we still don't have a clear, clear view on that actually being city property for us to actually give away. And this is not new. Uh, this is a conversation right. that I brought up very early in the discussions with the schools. Uh, this is why I have from the very beginning and persist in my insistence that this be transferred not by a general warranty deed, but a quit claim deed. A quit claim deed is very different than any other type of deed in that you only transfer what you have. And if that is zero, you transfer zero. But if you have it, in other words, let me give you this example. 
It's Has the, the one that's off the property been used. accepted by the city yet? Do you not have to go through to court to actually get the property? Does it not have to be accepted to the city? Like, has the city actually accepted that road when there as, are, city, as a city road? When there are new roads added to the city at this point, you do have to accept them in. They have to meet standards. Uh, Public Works has standards for roadways that they have to meet a minimum in order to be accepted into the system. But what you have to understand about this property is that this was part of the original layout in the 1800s for the city of LaGrange and showed up on historical maps as part of the city. And, and at that point in the city's development, there were not the kind of acceptance rules that we now have for taking new roads w into the city. Uh, and again, I, I, the thing that I think is, is being missed here is that if you want to develop a proof system for ownership of that property, you're going to have to retain a professional to do that. And that professional is a surveyor who will give you an opinion about that, whether or not that lies within the boundaries of the city and whether or not it's city property. And in order to avoid that cost, I have recommended, as I say from the very beginning, do not go to the extent that we have to prove or set up a general warranty deed claim here. We need to persist in the quit claim deed. Uh, the example I was gonna share with you is, I can give anyone in this room a quit claim to the Brooklyn Bridge. I can do that, legally. I don't own the Brooklyn Bridge, but I can give you all that I own with a quit claim deed. And that's legal. That's not illegal, that's not gonna set me up to suit because the people that are accepting it have to be comfortable in, it, in its acceptance. And as you can see from the memo from the, the school system, this has been their position from the beginning, that it was part of the original plat laid out in the city of LaGrange in the 1800s. And their comfort level is there. And so from my client's perspective and my recommendation to my client is, you don't have to give any more than that. That's not being asked for more than that. And so if you're worried about proving ownership, we can do that, and we can spend the money to do that. But I will tell you, my professional opinion is you're going to have to hire a surveyor, a professional land surveyor in Kentucky, and pay him or her to bring that opinion forward for you. Um, that's, that's how that would work. And so if, if that's a concern of counsel, I would suggest that we spend the money to do that first. If that's what your concern is, that's how you meet that concern. Spend the money on a surveyor and make a determination. And if you want to go further, uh, the city can hire a title company and determine whether or not they have the ability to transfer title here on something other than a quit claim deed. But I've been trying to keep it simple from the beginning and I'm persisting in that right now until you give me direction otherwise. I haven't been given direction to do more until now. Sir, if I may, was, was that uh, piece of um, information obtained at one point during the 90s or early 2000s? Um, had, had that legwork already been done at one point in time and an, an opinion was given? There had been other survey work done, but it was done by the school board. It wasn't yes, done sir. on okay. behalf of the city. If the city's got concerns and doesn't want to make a transfer absent that determination, then that's that's where I have to just make recommendations to look to the professionals that can make that type of opinion. Yes, sir. Well, I have to admit, I have not been comfortable with your counsel on this, on this topic anyway. Is there another opinion or someone else that we could get, get to come in and actually kind of guide us through this process? Any? Any of us? Mayor? It's up to the council. I, I, you know, well. I just feel I'll like, I just feel like we're not giving, getting, a, getting clear, clear advice, basically, is what I feel like. I feel like we're not getting clear advice from, from our council, our attorney. What's unclear? I'd like to help you. Well, this has just been such a long, drawn-out process. It's like one day you say, okay, we can do a quick claim, then the next day it's something different. 
No, I don't think so. I just so. feel I've like it's always that. talking in circles. I feel like it's never a clear cut answer. I disagree with that. I've been very consistent and also kept written documentation of all my answers on this. And uh, with all due respect, I, I disagree with that. I've been very consistent from the very beginning on this. My recommendation has not changed. It's the same as it is tonight. And we have not, I don't think we've seen all the documentation. I would, I would personally like to take a look at, um, at the information that you have received through, um, through the other attorney that's handling. I haven't received anything from Mr. Baxter, so there's nothing to share. Before this goes any further, I just wanted to make a statement that I, I won't be voting on anything that has to do with this because I'm a Board of Education employee as well, and I feel like it's a conflict of interest. So I just wanted to say that. That's why I'm not saying anything. Okay. Um, I'll just say, as part of the Ordinance Committee, um, this has been hashed out in ordinance as well as here on several occasions. I feel that we as a city have come to as close to a determination of ownership as we can without it actually existing, which I think we've determined it doesn't actually exist. Um, if um, the gentleman from KNS was here tonight, I would be comfortable moving forward with it as is. Um, I think he needs to be present just so we can hear that he's okay with it or not okay with it. I don't know where he stands at all. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if we'll ever get a 100% clarity on this, but the fact of the matter is the city's not taking care of it and the school can't take care of it at this point. And it, it you know, I'll take Jean's position tonight to something needs to be done. It needs to be done this summer. We don't want it to get back to another school year before something happens. So I feel like we've had ample opportunity to look at any kind of documentation that exists and it's, there just isn't anything that's crystal clear with this. So sometimes you just have to make the best guess. And I feel like this is what is best for the city and best for the school. So, you know, I don't know. I don't feel like there needs to be anything additional done with it other than to have um, the other adjacent property owner here to give us his blessing or tell us his concern. Mr. Emery, I had a question for a second. Maybe you can answer. Um, with regard to a quick claim deed, I understand that that doesn't, make any specific guarantees about the property. It's, it's a situation where a grantor simply washes their hands of the property if, uh, or any ownership interest if any exists. Um, but the main disadvantage of a quick claim deed is that while it negates any ownership rights the grantor might have, it, it doesn't necessarily relieve the grantor of certain financial responsibilities related to the property. So can you discuss or give any thoughts as to where, whether there might be financial responsibilities that the city may still have if we decided to move forward with a quick claim deed. I'd be happy to look into that for you. Okay, the next month if, uh, if when Wayne is here and everybody's here, if, if we could get some kind of feedback before then and that maybe we can all at that point have enough information to decide to move forward with, with this, so thank you. Okay, thank you all for your time. Thank you. We'll move forward then with the uh, LaGrange Utility Report. Any questions on LaGrange Utility? Okay. Grange Main Street Report. Karen? Hope everybody had a good derby. Um, 
I missed being here with you all last month, and I don't know if there were any questions from last month that you might have. I hadn't really had a chance to hear from anyone if that was the case. But the very first thing on your packet you'll see tonight is a grand opening and ribbon cutting for a new business, Sunny Life Wellness Center. They've been operating there since November, um, but they're going to formalize it, and they're making it um, a wellness center rather than just a Reiki studio. So I'd already told you about them back in November joining, but now we're going to have a ribbon cutting. So if all possible, if you all could stop by and welcome them officially to town, I would appreciate that. Um, April was a very busy month. In your packet, you will find your standard report, um, but you will also find a more detailed report just for you in, in the back, and that's the report I normally give to the board, so you'll be able to look through that and call me if you have questions. Um, we did receive our certificate today, so we are an official, officially accredited program. We had a lot of people in town in April, so that was good. We had um, our Shakespeare in the Park, which we thank the city very much for working with us on that. We had 72 people there, not a huge crowd, but they said that was a, a good crowd for a first-time event for the Shakespeare in the Park, considering it was also thunder over Louisville. It was fabulous weather, but it was wonderful to see people with their blankets out on the lawn at City Place, playing, we had some that were playing chess. They stayed there even after the event was over. So it was, it was a great time for people to be around. We also had the Authors' Fair, and we had, and they've already signed up to be back for next year. We had our Blue Hydrangea Tea, and we had just over 300 tickets sold. We had about 285 that actually attended that day. Um, businesses were happy. Thank you, Shannon, for helping us that day. We, the businesses were happy. They were making sales. We had people from all over the state and southern Indiana and Ohio coming to the event, so we were able to reach out and get some new people in town. We saw a lot of people that had been to the chocolate crawl that were coming to this event, so they're starting to make us, we're starting to be on their normal routine of events, so that was exciting. Um, and I think that's really all I'm going to point out to you, uh, since there's a, quite a bit on the agenda for tonight. But um, the newspaper is, or the magazine was an article that they did on Lagrange. So if you have an opportunity to look through that, any questions? I will tell you, and I'm sorry, I forgot to list this in my report. We are going to be on KET, Kentucky Live. They came and they filmed for uh, two different days. Um, on, eight, on May 29th at 8 p.m. Um, so it's exciting. They interviewed two business owners and myself and took, like I said, video. And so please watch that. I will send out a reminder to everybody through the email to let you know that it's coming on. So that's exciting. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. We're ready for uh, introduction of Ordinance 3 2018. Sorry, we left it off. We can go ahead. That's fine, Chief. Yeah. Good evening. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you, but we was going to come over there and public comment, but it got left off the agenda, and I need to get him back out on the street to work. That's fine. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> tonight I'm going to award Officer John Brooks the Life Saving Award, LaGrange Police Life Saving Award, for an event that happened April 7, 2018. Officer Brooks was uh, dispatched to the Louis Damper Bridge where a suicidal man had climbed up over the fencing and was hanging on the, on the <clears throat> outside of the fencing threatened to drop down to the median below in an attempt to end his life. His professional and quick thinking was able to talk the man from completing this feat 
I was able to talk him back up over the fencing and then took him down to the hospital for uh, some well-deserved and needed help. Uh, this incident was caught on videotape through our body cameras and uh, it demonstrates a high quality of professionalism and training that the Grange Police and Officer Brooks strive to achieve every day. And as a result of this, I'm going to award him with the LaGrange Police Life Saving Award uh, certificate uh, that says that <clears throat> Officer Brooks was dispatched to a suicide subject that was threatening to jump off the Louis Damper Bridge. His quick and professional actions prevented the person from ending their own life. His heroism and, and action will always be remembered. Signed by me, Frank Conway, Chief of Police, May 7, 2018. Thank you. He also gets a little pin for his uniform. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Officer Brooks. Appreciate it. Okay, now I guess we can go to introduction order 3 2018. I'd like to inter introduce uh, Ordinance 3-2018 for first reading, an ordinance adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky annual budget for the fiscal year July 1st, 2018 through June 30th, 30th 2019. Thank you. Commonwealth of Kentucky City of LaGrange Ordinance Number 3, 2018. An ordinance adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky annual budget for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019 by estimating funds for operations of city government. Whereas an annual budget proposal and message has been prepared and delivered to the City Council of LaGrange, Kentucky, and whereas the City Council has reviewed such budget proposal and accepted the same as presented, now therefore be it ordained by the City of LaGrange, Kentucky as follows. Section one, the annual budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018 and ending June 30, 2019 is hereby adopted as follows. Revenues, ad valorem, 1,300,000. Motor vehicle, 151,000. Delinquent property tax, 75,000. Franchise tax, 264,000. Omitted tangible, 7,000. Business licenses, 400,000. Garbage commission, 380,000. 10% insurance premium, excuse me, insurance tax premiums, 1,635,000. Miscellaneous income, 50,000. Penalties, 12,000. Interest income, 2,500. Utility tax, 55,000. Mine and mineral, 7,000. Receive CLEF, 56,000. CLEF portion retirement, 17,640. House bill, 413, 13,000. Discounts, 22,000. Credit. Uh, encroachment fees, 5,000, bank shares, 61,000, community center, 6,000, federal overtime, 6,000, compensation tax, 2,275,000, ABC license fees, 15,000, litter abatement grant, 4,000, grand total, 6,775,140. Expenses, administration, 1,000,000, Fifty-six thousand five hundred and fifty and forty cents. Special appropriations: three million forty-six thousand six hundred and seventy-four and ninety-four cents. Police: one million five hundred and forty-four thousand four hundred and forty-one and seventy-nine cents. Public works: one million one hundred and twenty-seven thousand four hundred and seventy-two and eighty-seven cents. Grand total: six million. $775,140. Section 2. Introduced, seconded, and adopted at a duly convened meeting of the governing body held on June 5, 2018, after first reading held on May 7, 2018, signed by the mayor of the city of LaGrange, attested by the city clerk, filed and indexed as provided by law. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage, approval, and publication according to law and shall continue until amended or until June 30, 2019, whichever should first occur. Thank you, Steve. We'll have a second reading discussion June the 5th, the next meeting. Uh, next is introduction to Ordinance 4, 2018, please. 
Mayor, I'll introduce Ordinance 4, 2018 for first reading and ordinance adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky Annual Municipal Road Aid for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Thank you, Jason. Commonwealth of Kentucky, City of LaGrange, Ordinance Number 4, 2018. An ordinance adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky Annual Municipal Ra Aid Road Aid Fund for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. Whereas an annual budget for the Municipal Road Aid Fund proposal and message has been prepared and delivered to the City Council of LaGrange, Kentucky, and whereas the City Council has reviewed such budget proposal and accepted same as presented, now therefore be it ordained by the City of LaGrange, Kentucky as follows. Section 1. The annual budget for Municipal Road Aid Fund for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018 and ending June 30, 2019 is hereby adopted as follows. Revenues, aid money, $156,000. Surplus, $110,000. Total, $266,000. Expenses, street paving, $141,000. Utility cut repair, $10,000. Sidewalks, 15,000. Snow removal, 50,000. New equipment for street maintenance, 50,000. Total, 266,000. Section 2, introduced, seconded, and adopted at a duly convened meeting of the governing body held on June 4, 2018, after first reading, held on May 7, 2018. Signed by the mayor of the city of LaGrange, tested by the city clerk, filed and indexed as provided by law. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage, approval, and publication according to law and shall continue until amended or until June 30, 2019, whichever should first occur. And I notice we've got a discrepancy in dates. I'm not sure. Is it going to be June 4th or June 5th as our next meeting? June should be the 4th. 4th. Mm -hmm. We'll need to uh, amend the, make that change on the first reading of the ordinance number 3 then. June the 4th, I think I said the 5th too, probably read it off there. June the 4th, <coughs> next city council meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, introduction ordinance 5, 2018. Introduction of Ordinance 5, 2018 for first reading, an ordinance adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky annual city bus budget for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. Thank you, Shannon. Commonwealth of Kentucky, City of LaGrange, Ordinance Number 5, 2018, an ordinance adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky annual city bus budget for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. Whereas an annual city budget, bus budget has been prepared and delivered to the City Council of LaGrange, Kentucky, and whereas the City Council has reviewed such budget and accepted same as presented, now therefore be it ordained by the City of LaGrange, Kentucky as follows. Section 1. The annual city bus budget for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018 and ending June 30, 2019 is hereby adopted as follows. Expenses. Operating salaries. 48,128.70 cents. FICA, 5,689.02 cents. Vehicle insurance, 3,541.21 cents. Medicare, 1,210.59 cents. Maintenance vehicles, 5,000. Fuel, 16,500. Tires, 2,600. Fees and supplies, 9, 000, excuse me, 950. Postage and telephone, 3,200. Drug tests, 500. Ads and printing, 3,970 and 21 cents. Background check, $220. Administrative salary, 35,360. Retirement, 7,595 and 32 cents. Grand total on expenses, 134,465 and 5 cents. Contributions. City, $64,659.84. County, $20,000. 2012 JARC grant, $3,970.21. Revenues, TARC, $36,235. Bus fares, $9,600. Grand total on contributions and revenues, $134,465.05. 
Section 2. Introduced, seconded, and adopted at a duly convened meeting of the governing body held on June 4, 2018, after first reading held on May 7, 2018, signed by the Mayor of the City of LaGrange, tested by the City Clerk, filed and indexed as provided by law. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage, approval, and publication according to law and shall continue until amended or until June 30, 2019, whichever should first occur. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. I'll need an introduction for Ordinance uh, 6, 2018. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 6-2018 for first reading, an ordinance adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky Alcohol Regulatory Fees Budget for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, Commonwealth of Kentucky, City of LaGrange, Ordinance Number 6, 2018, an ordinance adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky Alcohol Regulatory Fees Budget for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30, 2019. Whereas an annual budget for the alcohol regulatory fees have been prepared and delivered to the City Council of LaGrange, Kentucky, and whereas the City Council has reviewed such budget proposal and accepted same as presented, now therefore be it ordained by the City of LaGrange, Kentucky as follows. Section 1. The annual budget for alcohol regulatory fees for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018 and ending June 30, 2019 is hereby adopted as follows. Expenses, full-time salaries, $217,830.34. Part-time salaries, $11,116.05. Overtime salaries, $8,750. Employee health insurance, $61,170.64. Employer FICA, $15,867.22. Employer Medicare, $3,740.04. Employer portion retirement, $66,120. Workers' comp, $9,874.48. Auto insurance, $9,533.23. Liability insurance, $11,558.68. Computer maintenance, $3,000. Seminars and education, $2,000. Uniforms, $2,000. Criminal investigation, $1,000. Equipment, over $329,000. Radio maintenance, $26,000. Total on expenses, $478,560.68. Revenues, fees, and tax collections on alcohol, $478,560.68. Total on revenues, $478,560.68. Section 2, introduced, seconded, and adopted at a duly convened meeting of the governing body, held on June 4, 2018, after first reading held on May 7, 2018, signed by the Mayor of the City of LaGrange, attested by the City Clerk, filed and indexed as provided by law. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage, approval, and publication according to law, and shall continue until amended or until June 30, 2018, whichever should first occur. Thank you, Steve. Need introduction of Ordinance 7 2018, please. I'd like to introduce Ordinance 7 2018, an ordinance adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky annual stormwater MS4 for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30th, 2019. Thank you, Ann. Commonwealth of Kentucky, City of LaGrange, Ordinance Number 7 2018, an ordinance adopting the City of LaGrange, Kentucky annual stormwater MS4 for the fiscal year July 1, 2018 through June 30. 2019. Whereas an annual budget for the stormwater MS4 proposal and message has been prepared and delivered to the City Council of LaGrange, Kentucky, and whereas the City Council has reviewed such budget proposal and accepted same as presented. Now, therefore, be it, be it ordained by the City of LaGrange, Kentucky as follows. Section 1. The annual budget for stormwater MS4 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018 and ending on June 30, 2019 is hereby adopted as follows. Revenues, 100,000. Surplus, 126,657. Total, 226,657. Expenses, full-time salary, 65,000. FICA, 4,030. 
Medicare, 943, health insurance, 16,000, retirement, 13,962, capital improvement, 126,722, total, 226,657. Section 2, introduced, seconded, and adopted at a duly convened meeting of the governing body held on June 4, 2018, after first reading held on May 7, 2018, signed by the mayor of the city of LaGrange, attested by the city clerk, filed and indexed as provided by law. This ordinance shall take effect upon its passage, approval, and publication according to law, and shall continue until amended or until June 30, 2019, whichever should first occur. Thank you, Steve. Takes us to old business, new business. Let's go with old business first in the old business. On old business, Joe, I'd just like to thank Stephanie, our new code enforcement. She is making a big difference. If you can really see as you drive through LaGrange, and I just want you to know you're appreciated. Yes, she is. Totally agree. Anything else? New have business? A, have a I guess it's a question sort of in old business, just because I think we've talked about it. Um, it's been a while ago, but um, is there any update on the traffic light for 53 and 146? I don't have any update. I've asked, and every time I ask, they're still redoing the polls, and the last time I asked, it was supposed to be three weeks, so I will find out tomorrow. Okay. I'll make a note and find out tomorrow, see if I can get an answer for us. If I do, I can... Send an email or something out on it. That's Sounds fine with everybody. Sounds good. Let me make a note of it right now. Okay. Anybody else got any new business? Yes. Um, we're going to have a vision committee meeting on May the 23rd at 6 o'clock at the LaGrange Community Center. Um, this meeting is going to um, kind of formalize an agreement with the Main Street Program to establish a green space committee. Um, there'll be representation on that from council and from Main Street and the park board and if there are any um, citizens that would like to serve on that committee as well, they can come forward to that meeting. Um, but that's just going to be to sort of formalize that, that committee and get them moving towards working on the green space and getting that property fixed up. May the 23rd? May 23rd, 6 o'clock. 6 p.m. Thank you, Anne. And we were able to allocate some money into the green green space project as well. So yes, on the budget. So we will so. have money in there. Did um, just following how we've had a special meeting after the first reading of the budget is is that something that we'd want to do uh, just for discussion prior to the June meeting? It's up to the council if y'all want to. It's, it's fine with me. Uh, I don't have a problem with it, Trey. Does anybody else have an opinion on that? Um, I mean, I'm fine with it. If people that weren't on the ordinance committee would like to have one, I can understand that because sometimes a lot of questions come up. So. Maybe... How did the three folks here who weren't on the ordinance committee feel about it? Because I think us on the ordinance committee are, I'm comfortable with the budget as it stands. So unless they want to come forward to have a special meeting. I'm very comfortable with it. I haven't had a chance to look over it like in detail, but if I have questions, I can ask. Because there are four of you on the committee and I'm, I'm not. So, okay. um, I mean, I don't see, that'd be three of us having a meeting. So I don't, I think that's pointless. So what, I don't know. That's fine. It'd be it'd be full council, it wouldn't just be the yeah. Three it would be everybody. I want to Dad. Then I say we don't have one. I'm fine either way. <laughs> I'm not going to help call one tonight. Okay. Um, I did have a as far as the ordinance committee. Um, I'd like to propose the um, five twenty four. I know you just said there's a vision committee the night before, but um, does that date work f for you all? The only thing I have on my calendar is we had 
code enforcement board hearing scheduled that evening, but I don't know if we're going to have any. So I'm getting a no from Stephanie. I don't think we're going to have any code enforcement board hearings. No appeals were filed. Did they work better for you? I'm, Thank you, I'm Stephanie. Actually, Maybe the 31st? Yep, the next week I'm fine. Okay. Here, uh, one other proposal. How about the 31st? That's the following Thursday. Is there a conflict? There's no conflict on the 24th. I'm not going to be here on she the 24th. A, we're we're going to be in conference in Bowling Green. Okay. The 23rd through the 25th. Right. I don't have a problem with 31st. 31st is fine. Jason, you okay with 31st? This is for ordinance committee meeting? Yes. Uh, Thursday the 31st. That should be fine. Uh, yes, please. There will be a few of us who won't be at division committee too. Those will be gone. You, is 5.30 fine or is 6 o'clock? Is that all right? On the 31st. 31st. Okay. Uh, ordinance committee meeting Thursday, 5.31 at 6 o'clock at City Hall. 531. Appreciate that. 6, six o'clock. I had two other things. I don't mean to be taking everybody's time, um, so I apologize. Um, and I'll, there's only one last time to mention this, so there is a cleanup of the Glen, if you're interested. It's uh, May 12th, so it's this Saturday um, from 9 to 12. This is the third time I think we've announced this at Council, so it'll be the last time, um, at least for this particular cleanup. The only other thing I... I would like to say is that um, May 22nd is election day, so don't forget to vote. Are we in new business if, uh, since we left public comments, if anybody wants to come forward, if anybody's out there and wants to come forward to, or anything, I'll, I'll allow it. Okay. Hey, Mayor, there's something in the packet. I don't know if we're doing it tonight or not, but it was the um, police vehicle written determination. Are we doing that? I didn't have it in my packet. Of course it. Hmm? I think it was a supplement. It looks yeah. just like the other one, but it's a little different. Oh. We got the two mixed up, yeah. Okay, we can do that. Written determination for disposal of personal property. Whereas Kentucky Revised Statute KRS 82.083 states in pertinent part, one, a city may sell or otherwise dispose of any of its real or personal property. Two, before selling or otherwise disposing of any real or personal property, the city shall make a written determination setting forth and fully describing A, the real or personal property, B, its intended use at the time of acquisition, C, the reasons why it is in the public interest to dispose of it, and D, the method of disposition to be used. Therefore, the following written determination is hereby set forth and made. A, the city owns certain personal property, specifically a white 2007 Chevrolet Trailblazer with a blown engine. V v vehicle identification number 1GNDT. 13S4722060018. B. The city intended to use this vehicle as a police vehicle at the time of acquisition, and that intended use was fulfilled. C. It is in the public interest to dispose of this property. The cost of continued storage exceeds the value to the city. D. This vehicle will be sold at public auction. This written determination is hereby adopted as true by the legislative body of the city of LaGrange, Kentucky. In discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Thank you. Anything else? That's for a motion to adjourn then. Thank you. All Second. In favor? All in favor? 
Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.